My name's Anthony Lowenstein. I'm a Sydney-based independent journalist and author. I've been writing about and supporting WikiLeaks since it began, right from the beginning, which was late 2006. I am undoubtedly proud that Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. I'm happy that he is. As I think he said himself at a debate with Democracy Now! in 2011, there's arguably two very famous Australians, himself and Rupert Murdoch, who used to be an Australian citizen, is now an American citizen. Now, Murdoch is undoubtedly an influential player. I don't agree with his politics or his tactics. What a lot of Australians should be proud of is that someone like Julian Assange thrived in Australia, learned much of his craft in Australia. He's now moved overseas, not by choice, and hopefully he may return here one day. I think what the Australian public sees in him and sees in the organisation is information they believe they should be told and they aren't being told. And again, we have to ask ourselves a very important question. Why haven't Fairfax, News Limited, ABC, SBS, any other media organisation in Australia got this information before? Why has it relied on an organisation with small resources to get it so Australians know what our government's doing in our name? And I think one of the things that's been very clear in the last year particularly is how the Australian government, the Labor government, utterly failed to both support Julian Assange publicly, accused him of committing illegal acts, which they had to apologise for because that was false, and most importantly and shamefully have been doing the bidding as every Australian government has done since 1945, that their major boss is not in Canberra, it's actually in Washington, D.C., and the Labor government, whether it's Julia Gillard, whoever runs Australia, needs to realise that Australians don't appreciate being told how to behave towards their own citizens from a foreign power. An illegal act that certainly breached the laws of the United States of America. What we've seen in the last five years plus has been a litany of information that WikiLeaks has released about a range of things. I often talk about freedom of speech issues, censorship issues, censorship in repressive states, Israel-Palestine, many other questions. And one of the things that strikes me consistently as a journalist is how bad my profession deals with the information WikiLeaks releases. There have been a lot of examples, particularly more in the developing world, I have to say, of journalists who have taken the information that WikiLeaks have released and used it constructively, cleverly, etc. In the Western world, in my country, Australia, particularly in the US and parts of Europe, in Britain as well, you've seen a litany of journalists, the New York Times, the Guardian and others, who've often taken the information from WikiLeaks, used it and then spewed out WikiLeaks somehow as an irrelevant force. The truth of the matter is, to my mind, they actually are doing it because they feel challenged and threatened. One of the things WikiLeaks does to me as an independent journalist is actually challenge the sycophantic relationship between the corporate press and the political elites. And one of the things that Assange himself has said, and indeed many supporters have said is, why in the last years has a small website with very, very few resources released more leaks in that time than all the corporate press combined for the last decades, literally decades? And that's an interesting question that most journalists don't want to answer. And I think that's because, and there are exceptions to this, and there are good journalists doing good work, but what WikiLeaks, I think, forces us to, to think about, or should force us to think about, is the way in which journalists and independent players relate to power in our own countries or elsewhere. And one of the things that has really been important for me and the information I've used in my own work, I know many other journalists who I respect have as well, is to give us an insight into what our own governments are doing and governments that we support are doing in our name, with our money, with our funds, with our corporations that our governments promote overseas. Very importantly, one of the key points of Cablegate was exactly that point. So what I would say is that WikiLeaks is an essential part of democracy and for many journalists who don't appreciate WikiLeaks or disparage Assange or make it personal or disparage their tactics or whatever it may be. The reason most of the publics in most countries support WikiLeaks, they challenge 
what is seen as the disrespect that most people have towards the corporate press. How people see the media has never been worse in most Western democracies. And the reason for that is that journalists are seen as too close to power. They're seen as getting sanctioned leaks or back rubs from politicians or advisors. So as an independent writer who needs and thrives on important independent information, WikiLeaks is a source unlike any other. And I hope that WikiLeaks, as I know it has already, inspired other organizations to do similar work. WikiLeaks can't be the only one that's doing that. Journalists or media players or other figures who don't respect what WikiLeaks is doing should ask themselves what journalism should be about. Is it about going to nice parties at Christmas time and having a back rub from an advisor? Or is it actually being independent and saying that the way power works is not responsible or accountable and it should be?